everybody. Um, this is my first attempt at doing one of these videos, so it probably will be pretty terrible. I'm hoping it will improve in time, but just bear with me. Uh, I'm getting used to this as well. Hopefully you find it somewhat interesting. Um, I know I like watching these videos. I like seeing other people play and getting different ideas, so um, I'm hoping really more than showing what I'm doing to get feedback and just hear different ideas from people that I may not have thought of. Um, so we're going to start a new game, and we are going to we'll set it up. Um, we're going to do a random civilization, um, so kind of whoever we get is who we're going to play the game through as. Um, that'll force us with different strategies and different play styles that we normally may do naturally. So I think it's a good way to kind of stretch the way you think about the game. Uh, we're going to do a shuffle map, which is completely random. Um, it's going to be a standard size. Difficulty level will be king, which is a little more, one higher than standard. Just so it's a little bit challenging, so we really do have to think about what we're doing. Um, it's not impossible or incredibly difficult, but it certainly will require your mind. It will require my attention. So we're going to start this game, and hopefully we get someone. Morocco. The people of Morocco await your guidance, Great like Sultan Ahmed al Mansur of the Saadi dynasty. Well known for your skill as both a negotiator and a diplomat, your careful words allowed for the forging of new alliances, securing the sovereignty of your nation and its people for decades. And still, when words failed, you found equal success in conquest, leading the Moroccan armies to victory on the battlefield while greatly expanding the grasp of your empire. Wise and respected Sultan, the people look to you for leadership. Can your skill in diplomacy match that of your rivals, or will you have to meet them sword in hand? Your once great kingdom yearns for that former glory. Can you build a civilization that stands the test of time? Well, I guess there's really only one way to find that out, which is to actually play the game. So, um, I've played a few times as Morocco, but never more than like, I don't know, 50 or 60 turns. Um, so they're interesting because they definitely generate a lot of money and culture from trade. Um, so you get plus three gold and plus one culture for each trade route with a different civ or city-state. So it encourages you to really spread those caravans out and reap the rewards of trading with lots of different people. Um, other people get more money for trading with you, which may make you wonder how that's an advantage to you if people are getting rich off of you. But you get money when people send uh, caravans and ships to your cities as well. So it really encourages trade in both directions. So lots of money for Morocco. Um, they have military units. They have this Berber cavalry. Cal 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 um, I hope I'm saying that right. Obviously, I didn't say cavalry right, but the Berber part. Um, they're good at desert warfare. Um, I've never gotten to them with Morocco, so when we do get them, it'll be a new experience. Um, so they come a little bit later in the game. Um, I prefer not to start conquering people until I have my special unit. I mean, obviously, if you're next to someone who's warlike and they really come at you, you have to do something about it. But I prefer a more laid-back approach. So by the time the Berber cavalry rolls around. If there are people that we need to take out, that would be the time to do it. Um, we also get a special improvement that we can do that has to be built in the desert. Provides additional food, production, and gold. Um, it also provides the defensive benefit of a fort. Which is really cool because forts, forts are awesome to park your troops in, but you don't get to enhance anything. This way you get both benefits. Really pretty cool. Um, so that'll be nice. We'll be able to defend all of our territory and reap the extra benefits and we're really going to want to go um, in the desert. We get lots of benefits for doing that from the Um That means we're probably going to want to pick up a religion um, that has to do with the desert since most of our cities are going to be there. Um, we're going to want to build things like um, Petra and just in, in general make that desert into our home. 
So this is our start. Um, I really like this start. We've got two luxury resources right here, um, which is great because that means not only will our people be happy from one of them, but we'll be able to trade the other right away. So that's cool. We also have this river. So even though these are still desert tiles, um, they're floodplains. So there's lots of food and gold. So this really is a great place. And we have these mountains here. So there's a science building that we'll be able to build and some wonders that you have to be near mountains for. So very good. Um, we're not near the ocean. Um, so our second or third city will have to be an ocean um, on the coast so that we can um, start building ships. Um, that's an important part of the game and we'll need to do that. So with all that talking done, we're going to build a city. And we built Marrakesh. And these warriors get to explore. Um, I'm going to move them over here to this hill because you can see further when you're on hills. Um, so we'll get a good look around at what's around us. Okay, so there's the coast right there. See, you can see the water. So we'll continue exploring. But they want to know what we want to build in Marrakesh. So in Marrakesh, we have lots of different options. Um, we're just going to go with a scout. Um, exploring the world in the beginning is very important. You need to know who your neighbors are, um, whether they're hostile or friendly to you, um, where to, where you want to build those uh, additional cities when the time comes, um, and you can also find ancient ruins that will really help you out when you find them. So we're going to go with a scout. We could go with a warrior um, if we wanted to be able to explore the world and also fight any barbarians we found. Um, but that takes three extra turns, and those three extra turns in the beginning, I think, are just a little bit too much. Um, especially because we're not going to be especially warlike in the beginning. So we're going to go with the scout. Um, we also have to choose what we're going to research. And I want to get us... The Desert Folklore Religion bonus is really powerful when it comes to faith. Um, and I want to get that before someone else does. Um, we're in the desert. Um, deserts can be really great places to be if you build your civilization to take advantage of that. So we really need to focus on making the desert um, bloom. So we're going to go with pottery because that'll let us build a shrine so we can get that desert folklore. Um, so that's that's our goal. Our first goal is to get the desert folklore religion. I think that's our first goal that we're going to work towards. So this guy gets to explore. We're going to... This is the coast up here. I think we're just going to go straight along here and see what we can... Okay, so that revealed a little bit more. Um, I don't like to give... You get two moves a turn, right? But I don't like to give, um, especially when I'm exploring, both move orders at the same time, like drag the mouse, you know, the full two units. Um, because every time you move, more is going to be revealed, and what you want may change. Um, like in this case, if I had went one more further... I don't really need to know what's in this water yet. Um, but we were talking about building a second city, and this looks like it wouldn't be a bad place for a second city. Um, there's gems over here. Um, there may be some fish or whales or something over here. Um, you've got forests. I mean, this, this could be our second city over here. There may be a better spot down there, but I would not be unhappy with the city over here. So we're going to keep exploring a little bit. More diamonds, so if we put a city... Um, like in these spots, we could get both diamonds, um, again, which would make the people of that city happy. Um, every time you found a city, it creates additional unhappiness. So you need to deal with that, um, or your people will be unhappy and your cities won't grow. And, um, so it's always good to have a luxury resource. So not only would we get the luxury resource, we would have another one that we could trade away. Um, and again, like I was saying, Marrakesh is definitely, um, a civilization concerned with money. Okay. So we just found some barbarians. Um, these barbarians are really close to Marrakesh. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, I still, like I said, I want to be exploring. I'm going to explore all around this barbarian encampment. Um, what I'm looking for is a place where I can fight the barbarians where I would have an advantage, like a hill. Um, and then I can fight them. Normally, I wouldn't really stop and fight these barbarians right away. Um, but they're so close to Marrakesh, they're going to start spawning units. 
um, and coming up to Marrakesh and reaping all kinds of havoc up here. And I don't want that. So we need to deal with them. So I don't want to move down here next to the barbarians because then I'll be trapped and only be able to move one per turn. I'll be like locked in place. Like if you play any D&D, &D, uh, like fourth edition, fighters can lock up someone's movement when they're right next to them, right? Well, barbarians work the same way. You only get one movement. Um, so it's very hard to break out of combat. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to move over here. Again, this is a hill, so I'll get to see a little bit more. I just discovered an ancient ruin, so I'll grab the ancient ruin, then I'll head down this coast, keeping an eye out for that hill so I can fight these barbarians. So ancient ruins give you all kinds of things. You can get free technologies from them. You can get boosts to your culture. You can reveal more of the map. It can show you where barbarian encampments are. Um, you can get money. People can settle in your cities. Um, all kinds of good things can happen from going into ancient ruins. Some of them are much better than others, and some of them are better at different points in the game. Like, I think that the two best things you can get, really three best things, I guess, are to get extra culture, um, because at this point in the game, you're only getting one culture a turn, um, so any boost in culture will save you many turns um, and get you down that route of uh, building your social policies much faster. So that would be awesome. The technology would be pretty good, because um, that'll save us time also. And again, uh, adding population to your city would be good, because we'd be able to work more of the tiles. Um, all of those things are basically just advancing you ahead in time. Um, so let's see what we get. Okay, we got the culture, which in my opinion, like I said, is the best one. So that was really cool. Now. Um, we're only a few turns away from getting our first social policy, um, which we can decide between getting honor first or getting tradition. Um, tradition is good for, for culture and just overall gives you all kinds of benefits. A lot of people like to go down freedom because they see the free workers and settlers, um, especially a lot of my friends that I play uh, online with. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I certainly do that as well. Um, at times, but I think just overall tradition is, is a little bit stronger. Um, so we got this scout, um, and we need to explore a little bit. So I I think I'm going to take him south down through this like mountain pass and see what's over here. Um, usually there are ancient ruins kind of spread all around you, so I want to explore kind of close to the city. Um, so we're going to go over here. More desert. Um, so lots of places for us to, if we can get those policies and wonders to really make the desert our home, then we've got a lot of places that not a lot of other civilizations are going to want to go into, so we won't have to worry about uh, our neighbors or anything. So we're going to go down here, and as you can see, now I don't have a, another, oh no, I do, never mind, I have another movement, so I'm going to move him again. Um, so as you can see, there's nothing around here to fight this barbarian. Um, no place to stand that's going to give me an advantage. So I can't move him to a hill and then fight the Barbarian. Um, so it's going to be a straight-up fight. And that fight um, will be... I mean, I will win eventually because I can heal and he can't. Um, so the decision that we have to choose now is between Honor, which will give a bonus to fighting Barbarians, which will help in that situation, and in general, there are going to be barbarians around, especially barbarians spawn in what I think of as desolate places. So, like in the in the tundra, in the Arctic, um, in deserts, which again is going to be our home. So the odds of us having a lot of barbarians around is really high. You also get culture from killing barbarians, so it can be um, a good way to go. So you get bonuses fighting barbarians. You get extra culture for doing so, it's not bad. Tradition offers you um, three additional culture in the capital. So you have to ask yourself, is three culture a turn guaranteed going to be better than the six or seven I'm going to get every time I kill a barbarian? So it takes me probably, I would say, three turns to kill a barbarian. Um, so that's really only like two a turn. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with tradition. And if we start encountering a lot of barbarians, we're going to have to pick up honor. But for right now, 
addition is going to give us a good solid foundation. So that is what we are going to do. Okay, we have to pick what to build in Marrakesh now that we built those um, scouts. So I want to build, the first thing I always try and build in a city is a shrine to get that religion. And especially in our case, it's going to be very important. Um, so, but we haven't learned pottery yet. Um, once we do learn pottery, we'll probably switch over to building a shrine. Um, but we can get a couple turns of work in on either another scout unit um, or a worker. Now, we've make, we're making four gold a turn, which is not bad. Um, every military unit you have costs you a gold. So, I, I think we would be okay with an extra scout. Um, but scouts have a limited utility. They're good in the beginning, and then they're not so good after that. Um, I think we're going to be okay with just the one scout. Um, I am going to build a worker for a couple turns. And then in five turns when we discover pottery, um, I will switch that work, the city, to building the shrine. We'll still have banked all the work we put into the worker, and the worker will get completed. Um, so we're going to be kind of banking work towards our worker. And then we're going to switch to a shrine, and then we'll switch back. Um, so Marrakesh will grow in two turns. It'll take 13 turns to build the worker. Now that's going to go down. Um, every turn, of course, it'll go down by one. But our population is growing, so we'll be able to put more towards it. So it'll drop pretty pretty fast. Um, so this scout, um, I want to know what's around me. To me, that's the most important thing right now, is what's around me. So I'm going to go up here. Um, okay, there's another ancient ruin. So I kind of... When I'm exploring, I like to basically make a circle around my city, um, but I get distracted by ancient ruins or cities because there's great benefit to going and checking them out. Um, so this guy is definitely going to go down here and check that out. In fact, we will tell him to do that. So he's going to go over there and do that when it's his turn again. And now it's time to fight some barbarians. So you can see it says it's we're going to be... It's a minor defeat for us. Um... But the thing is, is we can heal, um, they cannot. So we're going to go and fight him, and then after we fight him, we're going to rest until we're back at full strength, and then we'll keep wearing him down. Um, I guess that's one of the benefits of civilization, is you can send reinforcements and supplies to your troops, um, whereas barbarians just don't have that um, infrastructure, the ability to heal. So, oh shit. Sorry. Um... So I gave an order to my scout, because I guess he was still selected. There, that's back. So now this guy, we're going to attack. So I took 36 points of damage, he took 30 points of damage. So like you predicted, we lost that battle. That's okay though, because there you go, we have the option to heal, which we're going to do. And then once we're um, done healing, the, he'll reactivate and we'll be able to attack him and we'll be at full strength and he'll be down 30 points so the battle will start shifting in our favor as time goes on okay so we discovered some ruins i'm sorry we uncovered a map of the ancient ruins and you can see it revealed a lot more of the map to us there's a city state over here which i guess is probably the most relevant thing that we found so marrakesh marrakesh grew to two population. Um, this is what the city, what it looks like. Um, you can see the city around you. And if you go to citizen management, you can see what you're working. So my people are both working the incense because they get food and they get gold. Um, I can switch their production. This is what it thinks as a balanced approach is the best way to go. If I wanted them just to focus on food, it's not going to make any difference. Um, 12 turns until the citizen is born, 11 turns for the worker. If I wanted them to focus on production, my city would not be growing, and I would have a worker at 8 turns. I don't want that. Getting your population up um, to around, I would say, 4 or 5 is where you can start switching over to production. But until that point, the city just isn't at its efficiency. So we want to get up to that point, and then we may consider switching over to like production focus, especially if we're building like a wonder of the world and we don't want to lose out on it. But for right now, this is 
Um, this scout. I said we wanted to explore around here, but I also said we get distracted by new things that we discover. So Ragusa over here is a city-state. Um, if we're the first one to meet them, we're going to get 30 gold. So this scout is going to go over to Ragusa and meet them. The benefits of doing so are really great. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of a, a history nerd, and even when I'm having fun, I kind of like to learn things. I don't know where Ragusa is in the real world. I'm ashamed to Shall the clay say but to him that it. fashioneth it? What makest thou? I really like the quotes they give you for the different technologies. So we discovered pottery. So let's go back over to the city. And like we talked about, we are going to switch over to a shrine. Um, we're still going to keep the turns that we worked on the worker. Um, again, if you noticed when it was telling me what to build, their little... Um, to add you see how there are these um, symbols next to these? These are different advisors telling me I should build these things. Um, and while I think that their advice is good, my overall strategy really revolves pretty heavily around the desert right now. So I need to get that desert folklore um, before anyone else does. Um, if we miss it, we'll have to come up with a secondary plan, maybe like some plantations or something to take advantage of that. Um, but that's really my primary goal right now, is to get the desert focus. So I think it's important that we build a shrine. Um, although I don't think you would be wrong for doing any of the things that the, they were suggesting. I just, that's not how I want to do it. We also have to choose what we want to, what we want to research. Um, I'm going to go with animal husbandry, just because it will reveal um, horses on the map. Um, which I think is important, especially when you're trying to choose what you want for your religion. Um, I'm a big fan of the open, I think it's called Open Skies, the one for extra pastures um, that give you culture. So I'd like to know if that would be, by the time we get our first technology, I want to know if that's going to be a valid choice or not. So I almost always go for animal husbandry as soon as I can. It also gives us caravans, which we were talking about as one of Morocco's special abilities. Um, and we have someone to trade with. We could trade with Ragusa. So, Animal Husbandry has lots of good things for us. So, let's go and meet Ragusa. 30 gold for meeting Ragusa. We're the first ones to do so. They're a maritime city-state, uh, and they have extra gold. Um, personality just tells you the kind of quests they give you. And irrational means they're going to change from wanting to go beat people up to, you know, building great works. They're, they're not going to be consistent in what they ask for. Um, so I was saying before that I didn't know where Ragusa was. Sounds like it might be in Italy somewhere, maybe. Um, but if we go to the Civilopedia, which is their like in-game help feature, you can look, and I want to do that. So, there's a city-state here. It's a maritime city-state. Ragusa. The modern Croatian city of Dubrovnik was one time a powerful city-state known as the Republic of Ragusa. Okay. So I guess it's in Croatia. Um, not Italy. Um, good to know. Okay, so this guy, we're going to loop him back around to start filling in those gaps um, near our, our city. I did say it was important to me to know what's around me, and that's still true. Okay, so you can see I healed up all the way. Um, but they had a unit um, get spawned during that time. So now I'm fighting two barbarians, um, which could be bad for me. Um, if you kill this second unit, they can spawn more units. Um, so you can just kind of create this uh, feedback loop where you're killing barbarians um, just slightly slower than they can spawn them. So you kill the second guy, and then they make another guy the next turn. Um, not a good thing to be stuck in. Although if you do have um, the honor policy and you get culture for killing them, you can kind of almost like farm barbarians for culture. Um, but we don't have honor, yet, so that's not going to be a good thing for us to do. We want to kill 
this guy in this city. I'm sorry, this encampment. So we're gonna do that. So he lost 29, we lost 32. And again, so what we're gonna do, um, this is slower, but it's a lot safer, especially now that we have two guys. All right, our guys are really, really hurt. The good news is, is we get a promotion. Um, normally, I would recommend not healing, um, that you should be upgrading your guys. In this case, however, I'm really close to dying, and this battle is nowhere near being over. So, as much as I don't like to do it, I'm actually going to heal him instantly. So he'll come up, go up um, half of his health. So now I can wipe out this barbarian camp and then I can finish this guy off. Um, I may have to rest a little bit before I fight this guy, but my military unit is not going to die, which is very important at this stage of the game. Um, let's just kill him off. Okay, we got our 25 gold. Um, and then we're going to have to continue the fight against this guy. Um, and I, again, I'll probably rest up and then fight him. I could also pop up here to these he these, this hill and wage my battle from up there. Um, we'll see. Depends if he if he attacks me, I'll probably have to move to higher ground. If he leaves me alone, um, I can probably just heal where I am. So back to our scout. And again, um, hills give you a better view. So we'll move up to this hill. Come on, scout. Okay, that was kind of weird. I don't know why it froze up like that. So there's a lake here. Um, there's some silk. So there's a battle going on over here. So it looks like they are going to be aggressive in fighting us. So we need to seek um, some better, better ground against these guys. Otherwise, they're just going to kill us. And I don't want that to happen. We can't really afford to replace the military unit at this point. Now without a serious setback. So as soon as it resolves itself. I think it might be slow because I'm recording. And there's a lot of movement when they fight each other. What I probably will do the next time I record is set the option so they don't move as much. So anyway. Um, so we have the option to adopt a policy. Um, and I think at this point it would probably be wise to invest in honor. Um, we're kind of in a fight for our lives down with this uh, military guy. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up honor. That'll give us a 33% bonus when we're fighting the barbarians. Um, and will also give us culture when we kill them. So I want to move up here to this defensive area, if I can. Okay. We're going to get to try and get to that hill and then um, rest up there, and then we'll have healed a little bit, and we'll be on better ground to fight them. And this guy, keep heading back towards Marrakesh. We discovered more ruins and more barbarians. Um, the ruins are good. I don't like the barbarians. But they tend to go hand in hand. Um, the way that I always think about it um, is that the ancient ruins are like a city. And remember, this is supposed to be like 4000 BC. So, you know, how many cities or civilizations were there at the beginning of time that just got wiped out in some, some way? Um, I always picture the ancient ruins as being those cities. It was a city. They got slaughtered by barbarians, just like we're getting killed right now. Okay, we did survive, but we are in some serious pain. Um, again, we get to promote our warrior. I would really love to be able to um, heal him up. Um, but I'm afraid if I... I'm sorry, not heal him up. Um, give him these bonuses. Um, that's the, one of the reasons why you fight, is to get 
an experienced military force. But I'm afraid if I do that, he's going to die. There's no point in having an experienced military force that's dead. Um, so I will heal him. I don't like that idea, um, but I kind of feel like I'm, I have to. Now that we're all healed, um, we're going to kill this guy. Um, and when we kill him, you're going to see that we get culture for doing so because we have fun. So. You'll see there'll be like a little purple number that floats up. Oh, I move before you can see it. But trust me, we got culture for killing him. So our scouts want to know what they should do. So this one is going to be kind of difficult. Um, there's some danger involved here because we definitely want this ancient ruin, but we don't want to be near these barbarians. Um, you saw how it was fighting a barbarian for our warriors, and our scouts are certainly no warriors. So it would be even worse for the scouts. Um, so we have to get pretty close to them. So my first question, and I'll know this when I move the mouse over here, is can we just get there in one turn and then run like hell? Or do we need to kind of work our way in a circle around them? Um, what I don't want to have happen is move here, get stuck, and then be subjected to their attacks for a couple turns. Um, no, that's not what I want to do. So if you saw, that would take one turn to get there, and then one turn to get across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up this way, away from the barbarians. Then I'm going to go down here. There. And then we'll cross the river. We'll grab the ruins. Hopefully avoid barbarians along the way. And then run like hell to get out of there. And then we'll probably send our warrior, once he heals up, over here to deal with them. Maybe we'll back him up with some archers if we can. That would be probably the wisest thing to do. So, we're going to move across the river. And once we build the shrine, that's probably where we'll stop the video at. Um, we'll see how it goes. So we can see... Marrakesh has a population of two right now. It'll grow in five turns. We'll have animal husbandry in three turns. And the shrine in three turns. So we'll get the shrine, and we'll get animal husbandry. Um, once we have the shrine, that'll start our march towards religion. Um, and we'll be able to start building that worker so we can improve all of these tiles around here. So this warrior... Um, we're going to get this warrior over to our territory, and then we're going to heal him. So it's going to take him a couple turns to march over here, and then he will heal. Once he's done healing... Oh, that's actually closer than I thought it was. He'll come over here and he'll fight these barbarians for us. So let's see what's in this ancient ruin. Um, maybe some technology would be nice. Um, for our population, I would say, is probably what would be best for us right now. 